What's good, y'all? Someone told me I was neglecting my back testing duties last week, so I'm back here with another back test. It's 10:30 almost on a Saturday, uh, June 25th. So we're gonna be back testing the 20th, and today I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna try to just look at the 15 minute for direction, but use one minute ranges, and uh, just or five, well maybe five minute ranges, and enter on the one minute. I don't know. We're gonna try something different though. I'm gonna I'm gonna mix it up. And then when I get to a 15 minute, I'll try to switch order flow if it suits me, but we'll see. So June 20th, pound CAD. I think I did pound CAD recently, but I can't remember. Um, yeah, see, I did on these. I don't remember what back test this was, but uh, do this. So June 20th, let's uh, kill the desktop. Bam. Boop. Okay. And then we'll go to the June 20th. We'll go to the 415 candle and we will see what's going on over there so on the 15 minute oh man look at this damn look at this big old push y'all this is nuts um i think that we fill all this in there's <laughs> i'm bearish <laughs> from somewhere i don't know where but i'm bearish um just because we 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 yeah, it it feels so right. But look at all this chop. I'm not, I don't I don't remember trading this last time. But this is, I don't remember being this choppy. This is crazy. Um, I I don't even know what wick to use. I mean, we have this one here as the first one. Then we can attack this one. But you know, our main one out of the way is probably this one. And of course we have all these wicks at the top like it's insane it's insane but if we trace all that like like basically what i'm looking at right is if we count this is the high point for our current range uh from down here but then we broke you know these points of structure here we failed to break a high this high again we came back down we broke structure here and now we came back up and we uh you know of course failed to break anything we came back up we're here so from here to here and then we came back up and we're from here to here so i'd say we're back up with this high as the main high so because this point got eaten already right because it was from this high to this low but now we're coming back up here. So we have this high that was not eaten or touched. And, we, and it'd probably be somewhere in here that we bounce from. Um, I know this is getting confusing and I'm kind of going through the, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going through some an abstract concept probably, uh, but that's how I'm seeing this market. Basically, we're just destructuring the ranges and, and going back uh, in time to see um where it points that haven't been uh mitigated because if we're taking if we're taking this high to this low this low got mitigated here but then once we break out of it well now that leaves us back to this high that hadn't been mitigated and if this high was broken from here to here then that means that this would be the next high if this one breaks that we attack but um, I would say we'd attack here because this area of supply also hasn't been mitigated. So if that's not confusing, I don't know what is. However, we're just going to go back down to our one minute now and assume that we uh, drop from one of those areas. We'll mark this out as pink. Just so we know we have liquidity down there. Some orders sitting down there ready to blow. But on the one minute, there's no reason to not be bullish. On the five minute, let's see what we got. There's no reason not to be bullish. So let's see what happens once we get to this yellow zone. We start making quasis. We can start entering, you know what I'm saying? But it looks like we wanted to run it, of course. And so now, um, <laughs> if I were to take this po swing point to this swing point, our entry would be somewhere around yellow for a uh, risky buy. Like if we wanted to buy right here, right at the top, that'd be our risky point of entry. 
and what I'm going to do is because I'm slightly confident on this since we didn't clear liquidity is I'm going to run. I'm going to put the stop loss under here, enter on the tap of this zone, yeah, because I think we're going to run some more and go back up to this other point. Where we'll do one to three Got a nice five pip stop loss. This is very risky because we're not waiting for confirmation. Now we're just entering, uh, assuming that the zone will hold, even though this could very well be the one that holds. This is kind of like just in the middle. So let's see what happens. Looks like we uh, are most likely wrong about this. Oop, oop. I hit play on accident. Oh, well. So we did run this area of uh, supply, and then we broke back down into uh, this previous range, which we did not mark out. And so now what we're waiting for is we're waiting for a pullback just to see if we can catch anything. Let's mark out uh, a negative one. But we do want to flip our bias to sells now just because of the price action that's playing out. So we just ran the high of this. We started uh, breaking lower again. Let's see what happens. If we can get a pullback up to here, that'd be really nice. Okay, we're in one of the areas where we'd like to start looking for a sell from. And now we should get an engulfing and we want to enter as long as that engulfing is holding like that and not having to be like a weird render. The only thing that will scare me here is that um, we are so high in the sky uh, after this bullish uh, push like this would be a 50% uh, retest to me. But I'm going to put my stop loss above this zone here just so that everyone's clear. We're going to be trading from from this area here. I'll put my stop loss above the zone and we'll just assume that it runs lower because we're following the one minute order flow. Clicking on play again. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I think we're at one to three. One to a little under, a little under one to three. I'm going to break even my stop here. Um, my assumption is that we run this low. So let's see what we got. Uh, I could have probably just taken one to three. But what I'm going to do is I'll put my stop loss here. If we run this at the highs, I don't really want to be in this trade for a sell anyways. So... Let's do that and we'll see what happens. If we break these wick lows, I want to lock in one to three. Okay, so I'm gonna move my stop. Let's see where one to three actually is. So one to three is here. We're gonna lock this in, even though we do um, assume that it runs a little bit. Like we, we do assume that it runs the, these lows here, so. While we do want to hold there, we don't want to give up our profits. It was kind of risky already doing here when we started consolidating. But now that all this stuff has been kind of kissed, we don't want to, you know, just want to make sure that we're we're doing okay. And so we came up, we took us out at one to three, which is okay. Uh, but now I assume that we do run lower. Uh, However, this is a lot of consolidation, so we do want to kind of pop back up to the higher time frames to see what's going on. I did want to take trades based off of the lower uh, ranges, but I didn't want to like get stuck in a bias. Let's see what's happening after we get to the next 15 minute candle. Uh, looks like we do. Uh, it looks like we are attacking those lows. So I'm going to go to the five minute. And that low is just the low of this overall push here. So we took a, a wrong trade at the top, but then once it pulled back, we got in a nice sell uh, down here. Remember, this is our 15 minute uh, low. So I do expect a reaction from running this low because it's just such a large move, but uh, 15 minute is stronger. And I think that we have a magnet going down to there. Unfortunately, we won't be able to ride the trade down because we got taken out if it does go that low. So we still haven't run the five minute uh, range yet. This would honestly be a really good place for a buy if we wanted to um, 
assume that it would bounce from here back in to fill in some of this missing price. But uh, we haven't really broken any highs. You know, like this one, we massively broke a low, waited for a pullback to our uh, one of our areas, and then saw a rejection candle. This one, if we enter here, it'll be kind of risky, I think, because we haven't really broken anything massively. We just kind of are assuming. And that assumption would have been correct, of course. Because <laughs> I'm just looking at it like, oh, I got FOMO. Um, however, let's look at this a different way. Um, what if we saw this as our uh, zone for a re-entry here because we didn't really break anything we filled in this missing price like we were thinking uh and then we started pushing down um now while that is a massive move to the upside let's look at the five minute it's a nice wick right and we still have all of this below now we have all of these orders built up below that we could uh worry about filling in but i don't want to enter uh here i want to wait for a nice little pullback uh possibly up to here and then enter Sometimes you don't get that. I could probably enter uh, with like a FOMO entry here, but I don't want to do that right now. Let me drag this back up to one to three, and then we will uh, remove the stop loss thing because I was getting kind of confused. I do like the rejection from this. I still would like a pullback. <laughs> it's uh, really tempting me here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, bite the forbidden fruit and I'm gonna enter the trade um, because I do want to be on the ride for clearing that those orders to the downside I think the stop loss is a little large but uh, if I'm right about this then it shouldn't come back up here Okay, we're just clicking through. Um, at this point, I think I want to move my stop to break even uh, because we're at about one to two or ish, one to almost one to two. And we've, we're bouncing from the bottom here. Now, this is where buys could start to play out. Um, the other way I could play this and sometimes I like to do this while I'm on live is wait for a pullback to my entry and then wait for it to drop again. But since we're having a little bit of a rough session to me, I do want to um, I do want to break even see if we can get a re-entry um, and just play it play it safe. You know, I don't want to take any risks here, give too much profit back. So we'll put our stop loss at break even with the understanding that it could come back, slap us and then go our way, which it did over here. So let's go over and put our stop loss at break even. Let's see what we got. Okay, we're trending downwards again, uh, looking like we're bouncing from this head area. If you guys see, we just filled in. Oh, well, there's a little tiny, 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 tiny bit of missing price there that we just filled in. So let's see what we got. See if we can keep going. Almost. We just, so here's, here's the thing about this uh, trade. My stop loss was so large. We just cleared all of the orders. We just cleared all of the orders down here in this area, um, down to this New York previous low. And now we could definitely bounce up before we even get a, uh, a profit. But let's see what happens. So it almost took us out. I'll keep going. Funnily enough, we're actually almost at 11 o'clock here. And we just, this is a very low trading session. Um, just because of the opportunities that presented themselves. So I'm going to keep playing this out and see what happens. It looks like we're bouncing back down from this area of demand and just ping ponging right above our exit, our take profit and is teasing us. It wants us to, uh, you know, <laughs> be sad that we're in this trade for so long and it wants to punish us for using such a wide stop and then further punish us by taking us out of break even. So there we go. Uh, unfortunately, this session was only two R and uh, sometimes it happens like that, but that is just how it goes. Um, if we really wanted to, you know, kind of follow the, the orders and stuff like that, we probably could have made a case for a buy from here, but it's it was pretty difficult we did almost take a buy from here uh that could have been a nice uh another 3r at least 
and um you know we just didn't we weren't as aggressive this session i think i think uh there there is some room for improvement here it was nice to be able to follow this one minute order flow and just wait for this pullback here but at the same time it was only you know like if you were trading live this would only be two percent i mean that's pretty good but that's not like my average <laughs> you know uh let's see if this actually breaks the low i'm curious we're actually in the Asian session now, and there we go. So we would have had our take profit if we didn't break even, and that would have been fine. Um, but yeah, that's okay. In fact, if we just held this stop loss up here and we actually took it down to these lows, we actually would have had our same take profit somewhere in here, like right in the same spot. So it could have been a nice, even nicer session, but that is okay. We had, a, I feel like 2R is pretty good. It's pretty respectable. Uh, better than I've been doing on live recently. I've been making a lot of mistakes. And I think this back testing session was more about kind of training, uh, retraining my eyes to then like kind of go with what's happening on the market, kind of be patient. Um, and I was just very happy uh, with it. Like 2R, I think 2R is okay. <laughs> Depending on what account that is, that could be $2,000. <laughs> You know, anyways, that is uh, pound CAD on the on June twentieth, and hopefully wherever you are, you're having a happy life and a great weekend. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>